with us now to discuss the global beer market in his first ever Squawk Box interview, and we're thrilled to have him here. Carlos Brito is the CEO of Anheuser-Busch InBev. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, we've been having a relatively raging debate over the past couple of days just about the state of the world and, more importantly, the state of the economy. And before we get into the beer business, just given where you sit and what you see, where do you think we really are? Well, if beer is a metric, I think we're in a great place because beer has been a very good industry, industry to be in. We've been in the beer industry now, myself, for 30 years. And what you see is that it's as middle class continues to grow around the world and emerging markets continue to, to give us that opportunity. Beer is one of those things that people tend to gravitate to as a, as a sign of uh, uh, progress in life sometimes, you know, entertaining, badging. So people are premiumizing. Right. Um, but so we, we, uh, we, we had the CEO of uh, Coca-Cola on uh, a little bit earlier this morning. And, and he really looked, though, at the next year. I don't want to use the word headwind, but, but clearly not with the same kind of optimism that he would have put on this past year. Are you in the same place? Well, beers tend, beer tends to be more resilient than soft drinks. People like their beers. And uh, what we see is that if you look at... Uh, um, Asia, if you look at the Americas, even Europe this past year had an amazing year for beer. I mean, uh, Europe, of course, had a great summer, had the World Cup. All these things are very important for beer. But what we see in beer that I think is very important is that's one of the few, uh, one of the only categories within food and beverage that continues to grow volume and rate on a global basis. And today, that's one of the things that's very rare to find. I'm not saying in every country, but I'm saying as a global average, we're a global company. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, it, not in every country. In the United States no, that's what I'm saying. It, it has that's been a I'm bigger saying. difference. And what is that? Is it as middle class grows in other nations, that's where you really see the growth happening? Well, middle class is, is part of that. Population growth. People having access to, to, to also, amazing enough in some places, to just fridges and distribution. Yeah. Sometimes it's that simple. Uh, any more mature markets about uh, about people premiumizing, trading up. So drinking less sometimes, but paying more for the beer they drink. Uh, beer has gone through an amazing last 10 years, amazing assortment, widening in terms of styles, varieties, and the mature markets has really clicked to it. And, and so in some mature markets, yes, it's true that on average, beer is not growing volume-wise, but it's growing rate-wise. And people are paying more for their beers. And if you look at the high-end segment, they are growing, it's growing everywhere. It's okay. one of those segments that grow everywhere. Weigh in on the trade war and tariffs. Where do, you, where do you source most of your aluminum? Well, from all places. I mean, we're one of the biggest aluminum buyers in the world. Uh, in the U.S., we source most of it from the U.S. But, of course, this whole conversation about tariffs has an impact on us and on the beer drinker, for sure. Um, because uh, if you're a manufacturer in the U.S. today with the tariffs, you are at a disadvantage compared to beers that we bring from Europe into the U.S. because that can is not, that aluminum in a can is now called a can, oh, not aluminum, so it doesn't pay the tariffs. I, I didn't think same about that. Same for cars, the same for everything. I mean, we, we so talk about a, the tax changes being a huge advantage for American producers. I hadn't thought about the tariffs. Oh no, yeah, the tariff is that. for the American manufacturers is a disadvantage because I mean, you import or use aluminum raw material, you pay the tariff. If you're importing a car. It's in form of a car now. A beer can is now called a beer can. How, it doesn't pay the same. How tariff. big of a penalty is that for you? How big of, a, of an input cost is aluminum? And how does, what does that at the time, what we, well, At the time, what we, what we, we calculated was that it, it would double the inflation. So if, uh, for a beer can, if inflation is 2% and you would pass that to consumers, you'd have to pass another 2 or 3% on top on a beer can because of the, the aluminum tariffs. Can we talk about marijuana and uh, cannabis? Uh, you partnered with Tilray. Um, clearly, in North America, feels like um, this is going to be a much bigger business. Um, what do you, where do you see all this headed? Well, too, too early to say. What we're doing at Tilray is really a research partnership, R&D partnership in Canada. There's no decision to commercialize anything. Tilray is a great company, very responsible company. If we decide to do anything in the future, if it will be in a responsible way, because that's the way we've always conducted our business. Do you see the, that as a hedge on your beer business in the United States? I mean, do you think that long-term people will smoke instead of... No, or, 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 our partnership is on the beverage side. Beverage side only. to do with uh, vaping, so this will be or anything. CBD and other things in, in the beverages. Yes. But how worried are you or are you um, about people moving from drinking, if you will, to 
smoking, vaping. Now that people can you. actually get marijuana, whereas before, you know, nobody could ever get it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, amazing. That people have always had pot. Yeah. I know it's more, but people can it choose. Not, it's I, it's but not can, all of a sudden. It's, it may very well be yeah, you'll be able to walk into a supermarket. and. You know. I know, but people either like to drink. I, I just don't. I don't know if suddenly it, it, that it's any more legal than it ever was, really. And I'm talking 30 years, 40 years ago. But even I, in the U.S. and states. Look at the growth of marijuana usage in the United States and states where it's legal. And, and it's not that you do one or the other either, Andrew. Sometimes you do both. Right? Well, yeah, but even in the states where it's legal, it's very hard these days. You, we still don't have enough data points because there's noise yeah. to prove that uh, beer or alcohol beverage is suffering. Quite the opposite. We have no data points in that respect yeah. because you have a lot of people going to those states because it's legal. So it's very hard to do a, like a same store sales right. type analysis with the same population that lives there. Is, is so the there's growth, a lot of noise. Is the growth in the, the high-end beer market, is it craft? It's not Budweiser. I mean, how, how do no, you It's craft and import beers. Craft, import beers in different styles. Mm. Okay, so, so it's people, not... And Michelob Ultra, today the number one no. growth beer in the U.S. is Michelob Ultra. That's the carbs right. and, the, and the low, low carbs. Low yeah. carbs, low calories, but, amazing taste. Dilly dilly. That's already 10% yeah, yeah. dilly dilly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dilly dilly. You done that? <laughs> you, you, dilly you dilly. Yeah. Yeah. Now? What, what oh yeah, dilly we do dilly dilly, for sure. There's lots These are actually come. gummy bears I have in here. But, uh, <laughs> let me, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, well kind of gummy bears, exactly. Uh, right. yeah. um, but if you do dilly dilly on air, you know, from time what, to time, What, you think I, I got like. cannabis gummy bears? Dilly dilly, you know, or yeah. edibles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from Bitcoin to cannabis. Let, let me ask you, before we let you go, um, your company was really built on acquisitions, on, on, on combining lots of different brands. When you think about more acquisitions to come, what kind of areas? Where, where, do you, where would you like to fill in if you could? Our company is really built on big dreams and great people. Uh, and if you look at the, our organic growth in the last 30 years or total growth, a lot has been on the organic side and some on the inorganic side. But the reason why we decided to go inorganic and start expanding outside of countries where we started was people. Because we attracted all these talented people and we said, well, if we stay only in one or two countries, these people at some point, point are going to leave. So let's go to another country. And then as we went to different countries, we saw that our people like that. Right. You know, to integrate business, to learn from new business, best practices, to get our culture to travel. And that's what gives drive to not only the organic engine, but also when it makes sense to the inorganic engine.